this is Lindsay O'Donnell Welch with Threat Post, and I'm here today at RSA conference, and I'm joined with Erez Yalon with Checkmarks. Erez, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Lindsay. How are you doing? I'm good. How's your RSA going? Hectic, but good. Yep, that's usually how it goes. Yeah. So, um, so I wanted to talk. Checkmarks today um, released a new report that outlined some high severity security issues in a connected vacuum cleaner, right. um, which you know would I would not expect. So, uh, can you talk a little bit about the uh, vacuum cleaner, which, if I am correct, is called the Iron Pie M6? Yeah, it's the Iron Pie by a company called Trifo. Right. Um, so we found several vulnerabilities there. Um, the reason we, tr we started testing uh, this specific brand is just because they had, they published that they have a very good camera attached mm -hmm. to it, embedded, um, and we didn't, couldn't figure why you would like to, to add a camera to right. a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Um, so apparently it's an interesting feature that allows the, the vacuum to be uh, also um, some sort of uh, guard. Uh, right. You can use it for uh, security to see what's, happen what's happening in your house when you're not there. So we decided to look at it and there are uh, several elements there. Um, the vacuum itself, the mm -hmm. applications that come with it, and also uh, the server side, obviously. So we took a look at all of them and found some um, disturbing findings. Right, yeah. So from what I can understand, an attacker would be able to target the vacuum cleaner and they'd be able to access some of the video footage as well as take over the vacuum cleaner. Correct. So there are two categories of vulnerabilities we found. Uh, one of them is uh, less feasible because it requires being uh, locally in the Wi-Fi of the user or the victim in that right. case. Um, but uh, still, it is something, a scenario that can happen. Uh, we call it a man in the middle when an attacker can be in your um, network mm -hmm. and monitor the traffic uh, of information that goes between uh, the de connected devices and the outside internet and alter it. Mm -hmm. And we saw that we can, through the update mechanism of the application, we managed to trick the application and we could actually upload any application, any malicious application we want, and mm -hmm. basically taking over the user's uh, phone mm -hmm. completely. So that's one thing, the, the local attacks. Um, as you mentioned, there are also the remote attacks, which allows an attacker wherever they are uh, around the world, mm -hmm. just getting access to a complete um, live feed from the camera of any vacuum, um, no matter where it is, and also access uh, a map of the house, mm -hmm. and also the name of the network, the SSID, which sometimes allows to locate geographically the, the place that um, the hacker is looking at. Right, so that's pretty terrifying to have that kind of dual threat with security on one end and then, you know, home privacy on the other. Yeah, it's, it's basically a complete loss of, uh, of privacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm also curious too, another part of the report was that you had reached out to Trifo about these vulnerabilities and um, at when the report was published, hadn't heard back. Um, how is kind of that disclosure process? So we have a very strict uh, disclosure process. Um, but it only works if the vendors uh, actually um, answer or mm -hmm. respond. Uh, we contacted, uh, we tried to contact Trifo a couple of months ago, um, and since then, several times again, and different people. I'm not really sure what happened and why we did not get any any reply, but we still felt that we need to go out with the information to make sure that people are aware of that. Um, we're not publishing at the moment any technical um, information because we wouldn't like uh, attackers to actually make use of it. Right. But uh, there's no doubt that this needs to be fixed immediately. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, 
I, you know, we talked about IoT security last year at RSA 2019, right. um, and part of that was kind of the discussion around vulnerability disclosure for manufacturers and how you know more onus needs to be on manufacturers of these devices. Mm -hmm. um, ha have you seen anything um, change at all over the past year in terms of IoT security or how device manufacturers are kind of responding to that? I can't say I did. Right. Uh, I really hoped I would. At the moment, it seems um, the same. The big, serious companies are doing what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, smaller companies uh, don't. They either postpone the security issues or give them less priority. Um, these things don't change, or if they do, they change too slowly. Mm -hmm. Right, and I remember to, um, you know, Part of the discussion comes down to like regulatory efforts, and I'm, I know over the past year, the U.S. and the U.K. have both been kind of looking um, more closely at certain regulations that could be um, impactful to device manufacturers of IoT security. Um, do you think that that might have any sort of impact, or do you think it needs to truly come from so, like a culture? So usually, I have some issues. Um, comparing between compliance and actual security. Right. But we definitely need to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I think that the lack of, I wouldn't say supervision, but the lack of any standard um, and not being accountable at all for uh, the products is something that uh, needs to end. Right, and I think too it's interesting to look at different types of IoT devices and how um, you know, obviously you have a lot of smart home devices and mm -hmm. then you also have um, children's connected toys and connected smart watches. Um, and I, I just feel like the, the level of threats is so broad and um, impactful in terms of privacy threats and, right. and whatnot. So I just think that it's, it's pretty important to kind of be aware of that um, from a user the, perspective. The awareness from the user side is, is very important. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that the specific, this specific vacuum by Trifo is the story here. Uh, obviously, there are some disturbing uh, findings, but um, the general story here is about consumers um, deciding to add another camera in their house. Um, obviously, we want to have some more convenience, and I think that everyone knows that convenience comes sometimes um, you know, the price we pay is sometimes privacy, but maybe sometimes we need to stop and think again. If, you, if you're adding another device to your network um, with a camera, with a microphone, some access to your location, access to your, to your internal uh, Wi-Fi, um, maybe stop for a second, think if you really need it. Uh, I'm not expecting consumers to, to actually go and do the research we do and find out if what they just bought is, is secure or not. But maybe do some homework about the vendor, uh, the track records of, of uh, not security findings, but how they treat and deal with security issues when they are found. Mm -hmm. And the same could go to businesses too and enterprises who might be using, you know, connected security cameras yeah, or things totally. like that. So, and I feel like the risk might be less for that, less about privacy and more about security. Um, so I think, you know, that should be noted as well. Um, is there anything, any trends that you're seeing in the IoT security space um, that have kind of cropped up over the past year that we should be looking out for in 2020? Well. I think there is more of it. When, when we talked last year, um, I was under the impression that we really hit every, every possible domain with it. Mm -hmm. But really, we see it everywhere now, really everywhere with baby pacifiers and, and smart toasters and... and, and uh, it's really scary. Yeah. yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything is IoT, and it really, it really requires a second thought mm -hmm. about that from the consumer side, from the... Uh, uh, vendor side, um, we do expect them to to take the extra measures of making uh, more secure items. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Well, Erez, thank you so much for coming and speaking to us about your new research and IoT security in general.